that Hello everybody, we are live. We're about to get this color going for this wonderful piece I did a couple of days ago and uh, finally getting to have the time to color this because yeah, I've been so extremely busy with other commissions and things and um, digital work. So I haven't been posting too much, but a lot of those posts are gonna happen just that, uh, not right now because I'm going live right now. So anyway, hello to those of you who are joining in. Much love to you. We're gonna be coloring this with some fun lighting and possible cool shading, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> war warm lighting perhaps. And uh, we're gonna take off the pencil first. Uh, is there another, can we turn that light on? Let me see if we can. Yes, yes, more light. More, more. All right, so that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna start off by giving you a little bit of the information about the tools that I'm using. This eraser is the bomb. This right here is the Vanish eraser. I'm not sponsored by them. I just love this eraser. It just picks up really, really well the pencil marks that I had for the pre-sketch. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. The colors I'm using, everybody asks, and I'll tell you right now, Neo Color One. Neo Color One, Karen Dodge Neo Color One. Go get yourself a set. 30 pack is the basic start, but it's a very, very good start. Neo Color One, and it actually comes in a red package now. This is the old packaging. All right, I don't want to hear any more questions about what I use. I'm probably gonna get them anyway, but this is a Crayola marker. This is one of those marker maker factories sent things and you just put whatever ink you want in them. I used a variation of inks that are simply permanent and that's why I use them personally. So let's get to the color. Um, let's look at ha, the reference photo is actually on my phone but I'm gonna improvise so I'm just gonna do some cool lighting on this and I kind of know more or less Pretty much if you don't have a reference of what the person's uh, photo looks like, you're just going to you know, do blue for the eyes because you can make any color from the blue and I'll explain later. Alright, so if you have any questions about it, you can post them in the comments below once IGTV uh, airs and um, you'll be able to... Uh, I'd be able to answer it then. So I'm just simply visualizing like where the lighting would be. And in fact, the good, good place to find the light source is where the eye glare is. So you see the, the eye glare is over here toward the, you know, it's reflecting on the left side. So that means that there would be a light source on this side somewhere. So that's where you're going to uh, project the lighting and then, and therefore the shadows uh, from that light source and that's all you're gonna visualize. That's all you're gonna go and do You're gonna simply take that color and put it on the surfaces high do the highlight right there where that edge would be and That's kind of what you're gonna try and do is is mold the piece or uh, sculpt the piece if you can see that let's see Perdón, que no le estoy hablando a los que hablan español, perdón. Uh, es que a veces se me hace más familiar el inglés. Pero si van a hacer una caricatura y no tienen la foto de referencia, solo tienen que visualizar de dónde viene la luz. La luz se puede ver desde los ojos, desde el brillo de los ojos. Si el brillo de los ojos está en la izquierda, eso quiere decir que la luz de, viene desde ese lado. Y salpica su ojo, ¿verdad? Entonces, desde ese lado es, eh, va a, van a poner las sombras del lado opuesto. So, básicamente, eso es lo que tienes que hacer. Usualmente empiezo con el rosado. Sometimes I start with the pink. Uh, algunas veces empiezo con el marrón. Sometimes I start with the brown. And um, it all depends on what I want to focus on. Um, first, I wanted to make sure I got her lip color. So, therefore, I just like went into the pink of the face. But 
it doesn't have to be that way. You can change it up from time to time. No tiene que ser de esa forma que empiece con el rosado uh, siempre, porque a veces y yo solo quise empezar con los labios de ella y por eso usé el rosado para la cara um, no es necesario empezar con el rosado específicamente sino del color que quiera ¿verdad? Uh, después es, es bueno cambiar el proceso para familiarizarse con otros colores uh, al inicio it was, it's good to familiarize yourself with other colors that you can familiarize yourself with uh, a, to, to start with so you know I'm thinking about you know form and I'm thinking about um, the not drop shadow cast shadows so form shadows and cast shadows when I when I'm seeing this so that's where I would like to start is what are my forms what did I mean what did I want to say with the lines that I laid in and then from there you know I just say okay well this here judging from these lines kind of have surface a surface here and then it goes back cool all right so that's that's what I want to say all right so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a, a little form shadow right there and it gives me the back and then the front and now all I'm missing is this side all right so I can actually go deeper on that side and I and and laying a thinner shadow in the front here and now I have my three planes side where the lighting is hitting the front where the light is hitting less and then where the light is hitting least all the way in the back en lo que hago la caricatura básicamente empiezo uh, mirando uh, las las sombras de forma de la forma de de, el, de lo que estoy coloreando y también la sombra que, que cae de las formas. Por ejemplo, for, for example, this is a, is a circle, but it could become a sphere just by putting the form shadow. Right? This is the form shadow. Esta es la sombra de la forma, ¿verdad? Uh, se, esto es un círculo y puede ser un, una esfera con la sombra de la forma. And once you lay in your cast shadow, ya cuando le pongan la, la sombra que, que cae, esa es otra sombra. Muy importante, very, very important, this cast shadow. So that cast shadow will take the form of whatever is landing on and this is going to be the shadow that takes the form of whatever it is coming off of or the, it, the form itself so that's pretty cool and then there will be a little bit of darkness toward the closer you get and then little little fuzzy edges the farther you get basic right basic cool all right so Returning to the sketch, I'm just gonna go in there. Um, I know that he's a little bit darker than she is, so I'm gonna simply start with the brown and I'm gonna apply it very lightly uh, in some areas and very, you know, saturated in others. Um, sé que él es más oscuro que ella. So voy a empezar con este color marrón poniéndole más presión en un lugar, en unos lugares más que otros. Entonces empezaré aquí y and I will keep in mind the glare of the glasses um, where do I want my lighting to be probably up here but since those are already taken from from you because I put in the eyebrows uh, I guess I could do like another tool uh, let's see even if I do this color this pink since it's brighter than that black it's going to show up as a highlight so I could do that Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> That's probably what I'm gonna what I'm gonna go with. Um, so before I go in there and go all crazy with the glasses, I'm just gonna put all the values on the face itself. Um, estoy pensando todavía en dónde caerá la luz y, y dónde estaría la luz de reflejo de los de las gafas aquí. Uh, although honestly, it wouldn't be necessarily this light source. 
it could be another light source over here because that plane is actually like this so the projection from the high you know the light would not come back to me it would actually go somewhere else and I wouldn't see any highlight on this so I maybe I should take that off as much as I can all right yeah see I love this eraser <sighs> anyways <laughs> so knowing that he's darker I'm gonna start with his and I'm just gonna lay in some of the values and I'm also gonna think about the forms that I've drawn here um, so I'm gonna just go in with some darker areas on that side I'm gonna make this three planes just the way I did for the mouth le voy a hacer tres planos como le hice para la cara aquí en la en el en la frente y en los cachetes aquí para para que se vean las dimensiones okay. so let's go in there right Here's another factor that, you know, there will always be something else to learn, something else to explain, right? Um, here's another factor. This right here, I'd never even explained, and you're wondering why the hell did I put a, that's where the, that's where the lighting is coming from, right? Yeah, that's why I applied it lightly, and that has to be there because um, it is the skin tone. Eh, me estarían preguntando varias personas, ¿cómo es que le pusiste un color aquí donde viene, de donde viene la luz? Y en verdad es que um, ese es el color de la piel y tiene que estar ahí, honestamente. Ya entonces cuando vaya a doblar la forma, where, you, where the planes change is where you would put the highlight generally because that's what would, you know, generally catch a highlight um, just like the eyes do. Um, but that's different, you know, it might be very, very similar, but it's a different kind of uh, surface, you know, and it's sort of wet and therefore it reflects a lot more light than this, but it's still the same concept wherever the plane changes, you, that's where you would normally lay in your highlight, just like this right here, just like this, it goes from side to front, and that's why I've laid in the highlight there and so on. Um, there's other exercises to work on this, but let's just get to it. I'm thinking of just form shadows first. And then, and then uh, drop shadows or cast shadows, which is difficult because I'm used to doing both. <laughs> Haré las sombras de las formas primero y después las, uh, las sombras de que caen. ¿verdad? Las líneas indican dónde van a poner las divisiones de luz y de, de cada plano y todo eso. The lines indicate like where you're going to put in your light um, and your, divi your, your division of planes. Um, you know, so from here, you know, you can see that as the bottom. Well, that's one plane rather. And then this is another plane with that line right there. So that's how you can tell. And just like this also, you know, I'm just laying in some values right there, boom, boom. And these are not, these are not cast shadows. These are form shadows still. It also depends on the anatomy of the body, like where, where exactly some of that stuff is happening, you know, depending on the body structure, you know, if the person is uh, heavy set or if he is or she is very skinny and so on that's how you can determine where the shadows would go and of course you practice your forms your basic forms to be able to um, adapt each coloring um, style per phase um, where you would hit those shadows and stuff like that so it's looking so plain. Se ve tan así plano ya sin ponerle la luz, las sombras de, you know, que caen. Y debería yo aprender la, el nombre de esa sombra en, para, la, eh, eh, para las técnicas en español, ¿verdad? Um, aunque no estoy mirando los comentarios, uh, saludos a todos quienes están aquí. 
Hello to everybody. For those of you who are watching, I'm not looking at the comments too much at all. I'm just in the zone trying to explain at the same time as I'm trying to translate and color. Um, so the last thing would be, okay, you know, you can see that the forms are there, cool, uh, but no cash, no cash shadows are there at all. And then this is where the magic happens though to me. And I feel like this is where you really, really want to focus your energy if you are watching, okay? You ready for this? I'm gonna actually zoom in to the face I'm coloring right over here so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing to that face or with it. All right, here we go, you ready? her hair it really doesn't matter if I go over it because her hair is very dark so you just go over it with black but I still want to follow through because it gives me a little bit more form just just those little forms have applied a lot more life a lot more depth to the drawing and it pops the features out and everything Even that right now is is doing what, what we kind of wanted to see. Just a little color tutorial here for you. I know un poco de un tutorial. De coloreo, colorear en, espa en español e inglés, <laughs> in Spanish and English. Okay, so those little parts that I just added you can see the difference now it really brings out the different structures and things I can if si yo le pongo una sombra la sombra más hacia acá por atrás y todo eso quiere decir que la, la nariz sobresale más so the more uh, the, the, the length the more uh, I add length to the shadow literally will would extend what form is casting that shadow so no matter how short you may see it here if i were to add a longer cast shadow one this would look like it's farther out or or rather and this will look like it's farther back as well depending on the forms that i add here so let's just say i want to add it here instead Okay, so then the, the lighting is up top and is laying the, casting the shadow right there. And it doesn't even touch this if I don't want it to, because if it doesn't touch this and I can communicate, that is farther gone than that, that it would be out of the range and path of that shadow. Or I can add it and I can say that that shape is actually not like that, that it's more like this and that it is catching that that shadow being casted on it. so there's so much you could do with the shadows and the cast shadows or the form shadows and the cast shadows the cast shadows are like some of the most useful things and that's actually uh, something that you really really want to familiarize yourself with so that's what I have to say about that thank you so much for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments right now I'm looking at the comments. I'm looking at the comments. Saludos a todos. A ver, a ver, a ver.
Yes, I can draw you. Order on alanyj.com. Hurry, while supplies last. Oh, wow. Somebody's doing some hate speeches over here. Report comment. Goodbye. I'm sorry, but I don't like that. And nobody else appreciates it either. Goodbye. All right. So we need positivity, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Hello to India. Gracias, gracias. Asu Makina. And I'm answering questions. And I'm going to give it another 30 seconds. If nobody asks any questions, then I will, I'll continue coloring. All right. You're so good. I'm getting a lot of teaching skills, communication skills. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, my God. No, you're not supposed to see it. No. Right, Jen, you're not supposed to see it yet. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks for the big hint, the hints. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna continue on. And uh, I wanted to add some highlights to this. I'm thinking I can put like the reflection of her hair up top here and kind of will continue up on this side as well got to think about how I'm gonna do that so an understanding that, I, that I've gathered from doing any kind of glass is that you would want you would want to <clears throat> sort of show the detail in the part that light is not reflecting on so that it so that it looks realistic uh, so I'm gonna just simply apply a little bit of a dark shadow here a little bit just to show the the skin tone and I'm gonna try and do a highlight maybe here And again, I'm still learning this technique, but it is something that I've sort of understood as true and I just have to practice it more. Um, and let's look here. This is where I would sort of put her hair. And I would maybe do it with a darker color just to see the reflection here of this and uh, we'll see we'll see how else we do that I might be too I might be panicking too much over you know just having learned that and, and putting it into practice right this second however I really want to do it I just I know I, I, it'll take long okay so what's happening in here and why am I putting that top part dark there is a cast shadow from this mass casting into there so it's not only going to hit that part but it's also going to um, affect whatever part is is facing forward uh, in there so some of the parts will go down some of the parts will go up but here I want to say that goes down and then this comes up out again so that's what that shadow would kind of say up this way yeah something very very much like that yeah you see the more I length I add from the front of that to the front of this shape the deeper that eye looks so the distance pushes back farther. <laughs> Lady says, my eyes are not that big, or my lips are not that big. 
You're not supposed to see this yet. Uh, so what I've just come to do is simply do the same highlights on both glasses because I'm chickening out. I am. I am. I'm not going to do what I think I sh you know, could have done because it's going to take too long for the live. Because I don't understand it yet. But you will see me try that more and more and hopefully you guys enjoy that part of it. Anyway, I also have to think about the cast shadow still that will come from the rim of the glasses itself. That's actually what that initial shadow here was, is the, the glasses coming in there. Also, it has to have this one lay in the shadow, which would then go that way, like that. And then, this is the cast shadow here for the glasses, communicating that that is a round surface at that point. Right down, and right down this way as well, and right down that way. And also, boom, boom, as it is casting this shadow into there. The nose is also catch, casting a shadow right in here. Very big shadow right there. Cool. Still keeping this this highlight right there. Just we want to keep that. It's so cool looking. All right. So if we want to darken anything else around it, we can. We're just gonna use the purple right around everything, and that'll also give the glasses the real highlight look based on everything else is dark. So it's next is the is the contrast from its surrounding. That makes sense? So I think that's cool and fun. Thanks so much for all of those who are watching from all over the world. Hello to Brazil. Brazil. I'm gonna continue on with this brown. I'm gonna mix it with that pink. Just to give a little bit more form to the shape itself. We'll go around the shape this way, boom. That is a that is a structure in itself, and then it breaks down into another mass here. Which you know you can do much with. Remember, remember this? I left this little highlight area here. That is the reflective light, and in fact, that doesn't have to be that light. It actually could be a little darker because this is this is the highlight, right? There. This is a reflective light from this surface, so the light is coming down and then hitting back right in there, and that's what that is. So in here, notice what I did was I just simply left a little edge. So in here, on the opposite side, we're going to leave a little edge too, just simply to say, okay, there's some highlight happening from that side. Plus, it gives it a nice form, you know, um, a 3D kind of form when you leave that little highlight. And sometimes you do want to shape that highlight, and that's something we can cover at a later time. A veces quieres hacer una forma de tridimensional y en verdad debes dejar un poco de luz así en un lado de la forma porque va a dejar que se vea como si es tridimensional uh, al ser que este es un lado, esta es la parte de delante y aquel lado es ya otro, otra superficie. So, you just keep working in that color. This is the cast shadow from the glasses again on the nose. Right in there, hit, hit up this little area here. <laughs> it looks now that this is sort of an entire piece in itself and it's almost in front of the glasses based on this distance from here to there. It's fine looking right now. <laughs> um, there you go. Okay. And then lips. I'm 
going to do a cast shadow from that top lip onto here, even though the lighting is coming from that direction. Um, I want to push that in farther. And I think that'll make that those lips pop like that uh, in the front here that much more. And then right back. Cast it in there instead. Notice I changed that shape into a little bit more vertical, which now does not give us a tangent where it was sort of continuing right there. I'm just simply changing the width of the bottom lip here, um, or bottom mouth area, and tucking it into where the top lip would, would sort of flop over. Um, and that's communicating this here led me to believe that this needed to be moved just a tad and that's what happened. Highlights on the lips. I gotta do that real quick here. That means I gotta make everything else around it kind of darker. Or use the vanity razor. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Went too far with the color. Vanish eraser. Uh, vanish. Uh, for the record, you should sponsor me. Love your eraser. But I don't want to buy it every time. <laughs> cool. Notice what just happened, and I have not used the the peach tone on the skin yet. And notice what happened with these three colors. It's all about the pressure. It's all about where you put the color. And this is how it's looking so far with these three colors. This is the brown. This is the, I believe, Sienna Brown. Uh, this is like a Prismacolor kind of, not periwinkle, just hot pink. A little, little more blue than dark pink, and then hot pink. And then this is a violet kind of color. Yeah. All right, so if you want, we're wondering, that's what those colors I just used are. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to the rest here. Um, I believe her hair is kind of dark. So I'm just gonna start with the darkest color I have. This is, and now, mind you, I use complementary colors a lot. Um, as you can see, this is more of, of a warm color by comparison than this one, because this one has a lot more blue in it, and therefore it's a lot more of a cool color. This is more of a warm color. So these two, even actually these two, because this is so much warmer than this one, um, will will be great combination to make the darkest darks if I'm just simply limiting my palette to this um, or these two so uh, let's just go with this one to start on the hair so what do I want to say I want to say that this high this is the brightest color why am I going so dark? Now mind you, you're seeing dark because it's based on next to the white. You don't want any white there, you know, you want just dark. So by putting in the purple, it looks like it's very dark right now. But if we lay in some of this warmer color, right on top of the cool color, right? You're gonna start to see something happen where you want then the highlight to be that purple and just like that it gives us a highlighted area allowing this to go over the brown will get more pressure in there also more dark because cool and warm colors get each other simply just darker I want to say complementary colors uh, darken really well. Okay. 
I could add black later if I want to, but I could also be expressive and just leave it in color the way I have it right now. So, for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to start with that purplish violet. I'm going to lay in some of these cast shadows from the face onto these surfaces. This is where the fun and the beauty of it all begins for me as it relates to the different surfaces that these become once you you know put in those values where it's different from the one next to it and stuff like that and so cool. so this one is is getting shadow from the neck also Okay, so what happened here? This is the darkest laid in cast shadow from the face. And then this is the form shadow. And that's why those three tones right there. Here, here's something I haven't haven't touched upon for a while. Aquí está algo que no había, de la cual no había hablado hace mucho tiempo, la cual es um, El porqué, the why. Why are you saying, why are you putting that color there? Ask yourself why and you can do a lot faster simply by answering the questions with the color. Let's see what we got. So I'm just putting in some warm or uh, let's see, cool colors. Right in there. I can remember correctly her hair is kind of dark it's certainly not blonde I don't believe so what am I looking at I'm looking at forms and I'm letting the lines communicate to me what surfaces are on top of what and then depending on what I want to say okay like that one is farther back than this one, therefore it gets it a little lower. Just like, you know, this one over here will get it a little bit higher because it is on a top surface. This is, you know, sort of below and about to sort of turn away. So those are different things that you learn as you go, um, as you do this more also. Sometimes I can't, there are some things that I can't explain that just look so good and real and, and, and proper that I just let them be. Sometimes you have those happy accidents as Bob Ross would say if you were here. R.I.P. Bob Ross. We miss you. These hard, hard uh, line uh, ca shadows casted are going to give these sort of a volume and a movement, um, and that's what I'm focusing on. Los movimientos que uh, les pongo las las trans las los cambios de luz aquí hacen que se vea el cabello mo con movimiento y además de las líneas mismas eh, you know, not even speaking about the lines themselves pero también de el el cabello mismo que tiene sus ondulaciones y así sucesivamente poderlo capturar con el color o con los valores de los so we're seeing a lot of light happen coming in from this side you know we're laying in the shadows opposite to where the highlights coming from and that's giving us that you know if I wanted to 
push this farther back, all I have to do is lower the shadows, and that would push that hair back a little more in, that, in those areas. So that'll go straight back there. Boom. Boom. All right, now we're gonna go with the brown. This brown's gonna make it a tad darker. It's going to make it a little bit more gray also. Sort of a dark gray, warm gray at that. Le pondremos el color más cálido. Encima del color más frío. Para añadirle valor y oscuridad. Y se verá como un tipo de gris un poco... Un gris medio cálido, ¿no? Aquí veo lo mismo que puede pasar aquí con el brillo. Right here I see a little opportunity to create a little bit of a highlight. The same highlight we see on the nose. Just, just enough. Boom. That gives us a little bit more dimension we can change that too we can make this one a little longer than the rest these a little longer and, and so on or we can just completely you know mask the one and then just leave the top ones you know you see how you can use this is however you want to But the darker I make the surroundings of that highlight, the brighter it's going to look as well. Con este brillo, lo más que le ponga, lo más que lo oscurezca alrededor, lo más brillante se verá. Okay, so we're going to do the rest of her face in the brown, just the shadows the form shadows and the cast shadows. And we're gonna do these a little lighter because his face is supposed to be a little bit more dark. Before we do that, I wanna do the highlight on the nose just the way I did it for him with the pink. Antes de nada le pondré um, el color rosado aquí que le hice a él. Uh, comenzaremos como le hicimos a él, a ella aquí con el rosado en la nariz primero. I'm doing the brown just in the darker areas just to kind of desaturate some of that pink and now ahora que tenemos el rosado en la nariz le pondremos los valores más oscuros de, y de las sombras de la piel y también de las sombras que caen uh, más tarde les añadiremos los colores aquí más correctamente say that there is a cast shadow here. I want to actually lay in the cast shadows because it's easier to see the cast shadows first. For him I started with the form shadows first and then the cast shadows but for her I'm going to start with the cast shadows first. Notice 
that right there is based on this change in plane here that I have set up. That means that this is the top and this is the front and that this cast shadow is, is curv curving out that way and then in here. Um, so that's gonna, this is actually that same stem going up and the front and then the top of the surface. And then this will cast a shadow somewhere about here. You see, and then continue right about there. So we're gonna do that for this one as well. Boom, boom, leaving, leaving the highlight, because the highlight is the highest of light, no? Start there and out this way down and this way. You can already see sort of like the glasses in there or whatever. Um, the stem right here will cast the shadow about there and also the nose. So those two shadows will kind of combine right there. Aside from that, the glass itself has, you know, blocks some of the light. So we're going to add a light shade of that. Still, that's going to be brighter than the stem shadows or the uh, frames shadow because the frame is a solid surface. It's casting, you know, it's opaque. It's, it's not letting light through at all. Um, and now we're gonna go move on to the form shadows. Let's get that in here. These surfaces right here are sort of on that plane over there and although they do catch light and that's why I'm going so lightly they don't actually reflect the light as much as the transitioning surface which is that those little edges that I was talking about right here or right here save that for a real plane change in fact you're having that sh that form shadow will stop there because this in itself catches the light some more although it's not a highlight and then after that it'll actually have its have a light or a, a shadow casted from the cheek which we haven't brought out yet so we're gonna bring that out right now by applying notice I left all of this much brighter this is the same concept as this with that little edge and lighting edge and lighting edge and lighting right over here also this surface here will not necessarily catch the cast shadow that it's um, landing from the glasses it actually kind of stops right there because it's saying okay that surface is bending away from the light however it will go a little bit lighter, yet darker because of the form itself, but uh, it'll be just darker because it's right next to that surface immediately casting shadow. add some value let's just do the cast shadow on this here right away Boom. Boom. Yeah. 
does kind of go opposite of the way I had it. Yeah. Because this, this comes out more, so therefore it should catch the light before it goes down to this part. And we can apply a little lighter shade in there. Same with this surface. What do you want to say? That this surface is very pointy and it catches the shadow in a thin area kind of like this or that is sort of rounded and it catches sort of a cir circular kind of highlight. What do you want to say? Kick it as the seat. Okay, so that's what you would put there as the highlight. You would, you know, let's just say that you know this okay so let's just say that this surface is you know uh, the eyebrow mass right there and this is that one plane on that side and then this transitions from here to here so you're gonna put a highlight there a little bit right but also you're gonna do a highlight here let's just say that that's where you want to put your highlight Aside from that, we haven't even done the cast shadow for this. So now that you have this surface that is like this, the shadow should follow it. It should kind of go like, whoop, and then back around this way. Saying that, okay, this is now sort of coming forward. Or if you want it, if you want this not to be so severe, you can push that down by changing the cast shadow to a more broad, farther away from its edge here. And now all of a sudden this is lifting more farther out, and this is a surface that is more rounded and, and smooth from the surface here that we want to say we have. So it'll kind of stop right about where it hits the other surface on the side there. Darkest where it hits, or at least light bounces around. And voila. There you go. If you've learned something, hit that like button. Much love. Thank you so much for watching. I will finish this off camera because I have so much more to do to it and I don't want to keep you guys awake for much longer I gotta go to bed very soon I've had a long drive uh, but hopefully this helps somebody ojalá que esto le haya ayudado a alguien no he terminado lo terminaré fuera de la cámara pero um, estaremos aquí terminándolo y uh, grabaré grabaré el proceso para que ustedes lo vean en YouTube or possibly IGTV más tarde. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, and make sure that you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. Link on the bio. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my NFT, which is also linked in the bio. Much love and have an amazing night. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Eh, chequen mi NFT que está en el enlace de la biografía uh, muchísimas gracias por su apoyo y por estar aquí conmigo ojalá que hayan aprendido algo y que les guste lo que estoy haciendo mientras tanto uh, hasta luego y los dejaré que duerman asegúrense de suscribirse en YouTube el enlace está también en la biografía thank you so much, have a good night muchas gracias, que tengan buenas noches